Um, there are three fat depots, okay? And they're not the same. On the scale, they're the same because you weigh a certain amount. But from a metabolic standpoint, they are not the same. So let's take each of the fat depots separately so that your audience will understand what it is that they're actually concerned about. So the first fat depot is the obvious, what we call subcutaneous or big butt fat. Belly fat as well? No, that comes later. Oh. That's the second one. Okay, subcutaneous. Big subcutaneous, big butt fat, or does this bathing suit make me look fat, fat? So are you saying that's good or bad? It's actually good. I agree. It's protective. The more of it, the less likely that you will have metabolic disease. It is the place where your body wants to put excess energy because it's safe. Now... Most of us have a certain ability to grow that fat to a certain level before it starts becoming a problem. Eventually, you can overload that subcutaneous fat where you will actually make the fat vacuole, the little pocket of, of fat within the fat cell, grow so much that it will actually cause the uh, border of the vacuole to decompensate, and now you've spilled the grease into the cell, that will kill the cell, and that will cause um, uh, inflammatory cells to congregate to try to clean up the grease, and then they secrete um, proteins called cytokines, which end up causing the metabolic dysfunction. In any case, you can overload your subcutaneous fat, but it, you have to work at it. So about how much fat does your subcutaneous fat have to grow before you become metabolically ill. 